In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about one of the Netflix OSS projects called Aminator. Aminator is a tool for building Amazon machine images. It is written in Python and runs on an EC2 instance. It's fairly easy to install, but one requirement is the EC2 instance that Aminator is running on has the following IAM policy. So first up, let's go and create a new IAM role called Aminator. We'll use a custom policy and I'll just call it Aminator policy and paste in the, that policy, create. And now we can launch an instance. I'll select an Ubuntu image, a T1 micro will be fine for this. Let's bring this up inside the VPC in a public subnet and assign an IP address so I can SSH directly to it. And now that IAM role that we just created, we'll need to select. No more storage, I'll call this one Aminator. And for the security group, again, I'll just call it Aminator. And the only access that it needs is port 22 for SSH. Okay, launch. Let's have a look at that instance. Okay, that's up and running now. Let's go and SSH to that. Yes. Okay, so this is a clean EC2 image, and in the next few seconds, I'll show you why I created a CloudFormation template to do all of this work for you. First step is to clone the repository. Ah. Git isn't installed. All right, let's go and install Git. Okay, let's try cloning that again. Great. And then to install it, we just run sudo python setup install. Okay, there's a dependency on setup tools, so we'll need to pip install that. And pip isn't installed. Okay, let's install pip. As one of the dependencies of pip, it already installs setup tools, so that's taken care of. Now we can just install Aminator. Okay, Aminate minus H to make sure that's working. And it looks like it is. So who else learns open source this way? You follow the instructions and then reverse engineer all of the dependencies to actually get it working. This is why I created the Netflix OSS Ansible playbooks. I have support for a few of the different projects. Let's take a look at Aminator. The playbook for that goes and runs through all of those dependencies, but there's also a CloudFormation template that uses an AMI that I've already baked. It's available in all regions. So let's go and bring up Aminator using that, and that way we know that everything is correct. This includes building the IAM role that is needed. So we'll create a new CloudFormation stack, select the Aminator template, and in here we'll type in the name of the key pair that we want to use. No additional tags, continue. Now we can watch all of the CloudFormation events happening and after a short period, this should be up and running. So while that's coming up, let's go and take a look at what Aminator actually does. The details are here, but if you'll allow me to subject you to some slides, here's how it actually works. We start with an EC2 instance running Aminator. We have a base AMI, which is just a pointer to the snapshot. When we run Aminate, we tell it the base AMI, so it does a search for that. It finds it and then creates an EBS volume based off the snapshot. It then attaches that EBS volume and performs whatever configuration changes we want to do inside a Chirut environment on that EBS volume. Once that is done, a new AMI snapshot is created from that EBS volume, and then a new AMI is registered. 
And of course, we can run multiple instances of this all at the same time. So you're not limited to building AMIs one at a time. All right, let's switch back, refresh, refresh. Okay, great. So let's SSH into it. I'll use a little tool here called Ansible EC2, and I just specify the name and the user I want to log in as. It uses Ansible's inventory so that I don't need to look up the DNS name manually, and I'll include a link to it in the show notes. All right, let's take a look at the Aminator configuration. Here you can find three environments defined, one for yum, apt, and Ansible. Aminator is quite modular, so all of these are plugins that you can modify and use whatever combination you're interested in. By default, Aminator comes with just apt and yum, so let's take a look at uh, building an AMI now. Basically, we need to specify the environment, the base AMI, and then the package that we want to install. So let's use sudo since Aminate is mounting volumes, minus E, the name of the environment, in this case EC2 apt Linux, and then minus capital B and the name of the base AMI. For this, I'll just use one of the foundation AMIs based on Ubuntu 12.04 that I have already created. You'll find them on the wiki. Just pick the region you're interested in. And in this case, we'll install Apache 2 as the package that we are provisioning. The way Netflix use this is whenever their build tools build a successful version of a project, that then is wrapped in a apt or yum package and then put into their repository. So if you want to set up a continuous build environment using Aminator, you can certainly do that where at the end of each build, a new AMI is created. If you are going to do that, you'll probably want something like Janitor Monkey to be cleaning up the AMIs since there'll be a lot of them. Okay, so this finds the base AMI, creates a volume from it, attaches it, performs a repo install of Apache 2, takes a snapshot of that, and then registers an AMI. And done. Let's switch back to the web console, go to the AMIs section, sort by name, and yes, here is our new Apache AMI that we just baked. Let's launch an instance from that to make sure everything is working. And a T1 micro with access on port 80 should do it. Okay, that's running now. A few more seconds for that to boot. And if we go to the public DNS name in a browser, we should see the default Apache page up and running. Woohoo! We do. So this was a nice example, but let's do something a little more complex. Aminator also has some plugins. There's one for Chef, Eucalyptus, and Ansible. So if you're not using the AMI and CloudFormation template, you can install it by doing aminator-plugin install Ansible and specifying sudo. Then you would need to create that third environment that I showed you earlier, that is using Ansible as the provisioner. Okay, let's build an Asgard AMI. Asgard is another Netflix OSS project for doing deployments, and the playbook for that is located here. The Ubuntu playbook has three roles, the base, installing Tomcat, and then Asgard itself. And the Ansible provisioner is specified here in the environment. And on the AMI that is built in user local Netflix OSS Ansible is a clone of the repository that already has those playbooks in them. In EC2 Aminator plugins, you'll find the Ansible provisioner configuration. And if you want to use your own Ansible playbooks, all you would need to do is change the playbooks path source. You can also delete the AMIs from the baked AMI if you wish. Okay, so let's go back to that command. The environment will change from using apt as the provisioner to Ansible. The base AMI we can leave the same. 
and here we'll specify asgard-ubuntu.yaml. And I'll also add minus minus debug so that you can see a little more detail into what is going on. And again, it will search for the base AMI, create a volume from that, attach the volume, go into the Chirut environment on that volume, and then run Ansible playbook, minus C for a local connection using the local inventory file, and adding one more variable called AMI equals true. This is a little flag that I use so that I can have conditions inside the playbook where I can build an AMI or run this on an EC2 instance that is up and running already. Personally, I think it's good practice to write playbooks so that they can be run on instances as well as used to bake AMIs, but it does require a little more work. Okay, the playbook is complete. It's creating a snapshot of that EBS volume. Aminator uses the same process that Eric Hammond from Elastic has been talking about for many years and is generally considered to be the best way of building AMIs. Register an AMI, delete the volume, and it's complete. Again, if we switch back to the EC2 web console, we can see the new Asgard AMI that we just created. We can launch an instance from that. And a T1 micro will certainly not work for Asgard. It requires more RAM, so let's select an M1 medium. Asgard currently doesn't support IM roles, so we'll leave that blank for now. We'll call it Asgard. And for the security group, we don't actually need SSH access, so let's just switch this to HTTP. And only from my IP address. We don't need a key pair, so let's go and launch. And after a few moments, that instance will be up and running. We'll go to the public DNS page, and we'll see the configuration page needed to get Asgard up and running. And Chrome is now reporting all EC2 DNS names as phishing sites, so we'll need to proceed at our own risk. So if we go down into the Tomcat role and have a look at the tasks, you'll see that it installs Tomcat and at the bottom there's a condition that says when this is an AMI build, stop Tomcat from running. So now if we go back to the vars file, this is where the flag that I pass through AMI equals true determines whether this is an AMI build or whether it is not an AMI build. So since the configuration is happening on inside a Chirut environment, we don't want to start services because then unmounting the volume wouldn't succeed. It would still say the process is using that volume. So you want to make sure that any daemon that is started is stopped when building an AMI. The same goes for system packages like fail to ban, NTP, and SSH. One final thing I want to explain is foundation AMIs versus base AMIs. A foundation AMI is just a raw OS AMI, so Amazon Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu. The Ubuntu images, while the AMIs are public, the snapshots that the AMIs are pointing to aren't public. That should change soon. But right now, that means we need to create a foundation AMI instead of using their AMIs directly. We can customize the foundation AMI more and create a base AMI, which then becomes the standard for all further customizations. Or we can do all the customizations at once and just use the foundation AMI to create our new ones like we're doing in this demo. By using a base AMI, there's less customization that is needed, so building an AMI becomes a little bit faster. And if that's a concern of yours, then you may want to do that. Well, that's all for this episode. I know we've covered a lot, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.